I want to share my story with you, and you'll see when I get going here, going the extra mile. I've, I've been a few places in my career. I started out um, Midwest, born and raised. Grew up on a corn and soybean farm in the middle of Illinois. I wanted to go to, to school to be an accountant, and my dad said, because again, it was after the 80s, and he said, you can go to any school that has Illinois or university in the name of it. <laughs> and so I was lucky to go to uh, U of I, University of Illinois, which is about 45 minutes from my parents' house, and it has a very good accounting program, so I was really fortunate. But I went to work for Girlmark, which is a regional cooperative, and at that time was in Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. And in 1994, they bought a business called United Cooperatives of Ontario in Mississauga. And because I was single, and they said, oh, NAFTA's just in place. You'd be an easy person to move to Canada. Do you want to go? And a week later, I went and I interviewed for a job in Mississauga. And a week later, I was working there. And I went there for what they said was going to be 12 to 18 months. At four and a half years, I'd worked myself out of a job. We'd moved all the accounting stuff back to the US. At the same time I did that, Land O'Lakes bought a company called Countrymark, which is another cooperative, which had a joint venture with Girlmark. And uh, so I was working on that transition just as I was leaving. In the midst of, of that transition, I had accepted a different job. So I'm on the phone with the people from uh, Countrymark and Land O'Lakes, and I said, I'm leaving. And they said, well, does, does Mike Doyle know this? And I'm like, well, I just met this guy last week on the top of a feed mill in Wingham, Ontario, where it had rained the night before and it was November, so it was ice on the top of the feed mill. And you know, he's asking me about my background and my career, and I'm like, this feels a little bit like a job interview, but I don't care. I'm going to a different job anyway, right? So they said, does Mike know that you're leaving? And I said, no, and they said, don't move. And about 30 minutes later, somebody comes around the corner, and he sits down, and it's got this name's Ron, and I had a job interview that afternoon with Land O'Lakes. I had not prepared for it. I didn't know it was coming and I had a job interview. And two days later, I had a job offer from Land O'Lakes. And I ended up reneging on that job in Chicago. And in, I net left the office on November 1st as a Girlmark employee. And on December 1st of 1998, I came back to the same office doing the same job for a different company, where my old boss was now my peer. If you don't think that's uncomfortable, <laughs> you're, you're pretty, you have a little stiffer back than I did at 27 years old. So I started that job. And uh, on the first day, on December 1st, they asked me if I wanted to move to Seattle. I'm like, what? I just started. Like, what? Are you talking? They said, well, the controller quit in Seattle. We just thought you might be interested. So on St. Patrick's Day, I was out at a bar with my girlfriends. Uh, and I met a guy in a bar, because the line was too long at the first bar that we went to. So we went to a different bar. Long story short, somewhere along the way, I pick up a husband. And I moved from <laughs> Mississauga to Seattle. When I got to Seattle, they were in the, in, in the middle of putting in a new system because it was Y2K, it was 1999. And then my boss, the general manager, said, your job is to sell 76,000 tons of feed because that's what it's going to take to cover the expenses to implement this, this ERP that your people say we need to have. I'm like, what do I mean sell 76,000 tons of feed? I'm the controller. Well, I didn't have to sell 76,000 tons of feed, but I did have to find a way to make that more profitable within our business. I've been able, in that process, to move from what was probably just a finance person to becoming a partner on the P&L. And selling those 76,000 tons of feed was about being a partner with the other people that sat around the table on that individual business unit. And in May of 2001, I found out that Land O'Lakes was going to merge with, buy, well, at that time, was going to merge with Purina and then ultimately was going to buy Purina. So we uh, moved back to Minneapolis and I worked on the Purina feed team for uh, a number of years. And then through that, again, I was able to move from a mergers, uh, um, from a financial role, supporting the business, into a strategy role where I was doing mergers and acquisitions, long-term planning, trying to fix the business. And then ultimately, I had a mentor that created a place in his leadership team, and I became the first female officer on the ag side of the business at Land O'Lakes. So I was able to take all these skills I had been building and all the expertise of learning about the business and partnering with folks. And now I was the person that was making the, the decisions. And I was leading that business unit. And that's scary. Because in most of those cases, not unlike some of the other women you'll meet here, I was the only woman in the room. And I was 10 years younger than all those guys. And as fast as it came to me, it went right back at them. Because I was not going to be caught 
not knowing what I was doing. So for 10 years, I was probably overprepared for every meeting I went to, I'll just be honest with you. This is not good work-life balance. But I didn't want to be caught not knowing. And I moved from the business unit into a corporate role. So I had been doing some international things with the feed business, and I'd been going, I'd gone to China a couple of times. And then Land O'Lakes created a role in international strategy to put all of the international strategy for the businesses together. So all of a sudden I was working with the crop inputs business, the food business, the feed business, looking for opportunities around the world. In the midst of this, I had a baby. Somewhere along the way that happened. But the phone call came to come to Alberta. And they said, what would you think about uh, coming to lead a cooperative in Alberta? They were looking for someone who had co-op experience, and they were looking for somebody with an ag background. After I had the call and I listened to all the businesses that UFA had, and I listened to the board as they interviewed me, I was like, you know what, I can add something to this business. So what did I do to create space in my career? I took risk. I took jobs that other people didn't want. It. Remember, nobody wanted to go to Seattle. I held up my hand and I built some relationships. And those relationships created opportunities for me. I wasn't worried so much about whether jobs were up and up or up and up. I looked at opportunities that said, let me, how can I grow my own leadership skills? And how can I expand my capability? Learn, apply, repeat. It's very important. It doesn't matter what you know necessarily, but if you learn from it, you apply it so that the next time it shows up, that you can apply those skill sets to a different situation, you'll be way better off. If you don't know what to do, just follow the golden rule. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. It sometimes isn't more complicated than that. There is no substitution for understanding your business full stop. It doesn't matter what business you are in. If you know it, you'll do better. Whether it's your business, your competitors, your customers, your industry. It will build your confidence in any interaction that you have. If you don't know what to under, how to get to understand your business, follow the money. Follow the money. That is a good way to understand and get a base of your business. Learning also gives you the facts to constructively challenge in your discussions, particularly conventional thinking. Because guess what? There's a bit of conventional thinking in this business. But guess what? The paradigms aren't the same. They're changing. Because we're in a global economy, we have different players. We have different buyers, different sellers. If you think about something conventionally that is no longer a conventional market, it will not be a good outcome for you. If you can get beyond it and think about it differently, you can get ahead of your competitors. Find a safe place to go and ask questions. Find someone that you can go and shut the door and say, I don't know what the hell's going on here. And that can be, I don't know what the hell the topic is. That could be, I don't know what the hell is the agenda. You know, there's lots of times there's an, you feel like, I don't get this, like something's going on. There's an agenda, it's because you don't know what it is. Find someone that can help you understand what those problems are and get up the learning curve faster. It's about listening. Particularly if you're up against that same brick wall, you may not be listening. Close the door, ask for some help. Test how much you can stretch yourself. It builds resilience. You don't know how far you can stretch yourself until you actually do it. And you're like, oh, smokes, this worked. This wasn't that bad. I was very uncomfortable, but I got there to the next level. So what's our responsibility? Reach back. Nobody got here alone. I've worked with women that have said, it's not my job. Nobody helped me. I'm not going to help them. I am not a fan of that. Getting up the learning curve faster is key. Help other people do that. Advocate versus mentor. Do both and know the difference. Find the time to do both and use your voice when it's appropriate to help other women. As I mentioned earlier, diversity of thought is really important. Think about your own team. Make it diverse in a whole number of ways. It's not just about gender. Find what's comfortable for you in an environment and use your voice. Well, how many times have you not said something in a meeting and you went back and said, you said it to somebody later and said they said that was a good idea? Say it. If you're thinking it's most likely it's a good idea and someone else is thinking it as well, use your voice. So what has it taken for me to get to Alberta? 7,000 kilometers, or 10,000 kilometers, 7,000 miles, four time zones, two borders, two countries, two times. Maybe you won't have to go 10,000 kilometers to find the right place in your role, but uh, I'd encourage you to think beyond where you are today because uh, there's a ton of opportunities in agriculture, so thank you very much.